All right, the boards are back. Thanks again to PCBWay. Um, these will be available on the share site. I have a lot of PC boards on the share site, so go check them out. Um, so this one turned out really cute. Let's zoom down on it. We've got MSIDOG on the front, and uh, this is the low voltage side and the high voltage side. There's a uh, insulation slot in between to reduce the, uh, the uh, path, the creepage path for the high voltage. It would have to go all the way around or go across the package. But uh, having that break there is good practice in a lot of high voltage situations. And the optocoupler straddles that. So yeah, let's get it up and load it. I don't remember what all the values are. So I've got, uh, I've got the schematic here. Uh, so we'll get out some surface mount parts and get it loaded. All right, so I've loaded up the board here with the paste and parts, and then we'll put it into my reflow oven and uh, get it going. All right, I have it all loaded up here. Um, I'm using um, PC817 optocouplers, and I'm using uh, TLC272 uh, op amps. All right, so I uh, have it hooked up. I'm running, uh, let's see, I'm running separate power supplies for the front and the back. This power supply is set to 10.1 volts. This power supply is set to 12 volts. Um, and I have a triangle wave going through, so it looks like it's very linear to me. Let's see here, oops. It's got a little bit of funniness when it turns the corner. And you can see that on the, so at real high frequencies, you can see that also on a square wave, you can see that there is some, some overshoot um, and undershoot. And that is, seems to be adjustable. So on the schematic, and is that exposed correctly? I guess it's okay. On the schematic, there's two potentiometers. One that sets the, um, where the diodes are being driven. It sets a DC offset kind of, it reduces the current. It's an adjustable current through the, through the two diodes and it, that can set the operating point on the, on the curve. And then there's this, um, one here that sets the output with this capacitor. I think it's kind of a frequency adjust thing. So if we um, tweak the frequency adjust thing, that's what I'm saying it is. Uh, let's see here, I am turning at its DC couple. So that one's not really doing much. If I do the current one, I am able to uh, sort of get rid of the overshoot, maybe not the undershoot, but I'm able to control the overshoot. And then if I go back and adjust the other one, I can kind of uh, clip the bottom in. I don't know, it's, it's just kind of weird. I'm not quite sure what the math looks like on this circuit, but um, when I did it originally, I didn't even bother with potentiometers, but because I saw an app note or somebody else do it, I thought, well, I'll put it in the adjustment. That'll make the board more uh, educational. One can go in and adjust some values and see what, what works the best. Um, but it is giving me a, uh, a linear, linear response from in to out. And it is capacitively coupled also from in to out, so it's not even ground reference. So yeah, it seems to be working exactly as I wanted it to work. So I'm really happy with this. I think it would be a great little learning tool. Um, I don't think a lot of people have uh, looked at the circuit before. And I think there's lots of things to play with in here um, in order to optimize it or try something different. Uh, one of the things that I did was instead of having an op amp on this side and an op amp on that side, um, I made this side so you don't have to use the op amp if you don't want to. And on the PC board, 
there's marked on here bypass so you can put a jumper between these two pins and it just gets rid of the need for an op amp on the output it's just a uh, 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 an iter follower so yeah so it's quite quite flexible little board cute little board um, it's going to be cheap because it's small so there you go that was just kind of a fun project uh, by viewer request